Hi everyone, this is Terry Miller with Terry's Tidbits. This is the first session in a 13-week series that we have helping you achieve your advanced admin certification. There are 16 people in this particular study group that we are starting off with. I hope we continue all the way through with all 16 of them. But we will be going through that study guide topic by topic, trying to, to make sure we have a clear understanding of all of the subjects that take um, that, that are required in order to pass this certification. Come along on the journey with us. Here's our very first session. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you come back and so that you get all 13 of these as we go through this study together. All right, so welcome everyone. This is the Advanced Admin Study Group, and we are getting ready to start our first session on the sharing model controlled by parent and granting access by hierarchies. So George, go ahead with your presentation when you're ready. Perfect. Can everybody see my screen? Can I get a thumbs up, Terry? Yes. Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is George Storz Saravia. I work with Career Alliance for Veterans. I'm a director. I'm in uh, Northern Virginia right now after 30 years of Army service. So taking the plunge into the Salesforce ecosystem. In October, I earned my admin certification. In January, I earned the Platform App Builder certification. Sales Cloud Consultant was next, but Terry gave such a compelling talk uh, earlier this month, and he talk, mentioned this group. I said, I have to do it. So I'm going to dual track both my sales cloud studies and this advanced admin. So thank you so much for Terry for letting me and Carla be part of this group and I look forward to learning from everybody. Uh, here are the key takeaways for today. And if you have any questions, jump in. And I worked it out with Terry in advance that I will be calling on you. He'll have names ready. And so we will be doing some cold calls to make this interactive. So be ready, but no questions on this one. Key points, number one, Salesforce security, as you know, is a many layered thing, or as Shrek likes to say, orgs are like onions, onions have layers, orgs have layers, right? So we're gonna go into what does that actually mean? And your profile is so important, as you know. It includes many permissions. Org access, so for example, you can control the hours when a user logs in by their profile, or you can control the IP address if you want to restrict that by their profile. Next, object access. So for each object, as you know, create, read, edit, delete, you all modify all permissions set at the object level by the profile. And then record permissions. And boy, this is something I struggled with when I first came into the ecosystem studying for my admin. I kept forgetting the distinction between records you own and records you don't own. And Salesforce is huge on the record having an owner. It might be a queue, but record ownership is really important. So we'll look at that in detail today. We have a couple of scenarios that we'll work our way through and that's where the cold calling will come in. So we'll have some fun with that. And then, of course, you have the field level security, which is the trump card, right? So even if you have view all data or modify all data permissions, if, you, if somebody has closed a field, credit card information, social security number, whatever, with field level security, field level security wins. So we'll be getting to those other things in future sessions. We'll also be looking at organization-wide defaults, which control access to records you don't own and they cannot extend permissions that the profile does not grant. So we'll be working our way through that. And then we'll also talk about this control by parent and we'll look at role hierarchies. So going to the next slide. Um, part one of the sharing model, your profile is what you have and it's one profile per user. So you have to choose that wisely during the setup. And the profile is based on the license type, right? So if you have a platform license, you're not going to have all of the uh, permissions that you would have with a Salesforce license. So the profile is based on the license. And what we'll be looking at today is the whole CRED, Create, Read, Edit, Delete, or CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete permissions. And we're really not going to talk about view all or modify all. That's ways that a profile can give you permissions 
to records you do not own in that object. So that's kind of a separate issue. And we're not gonna look at view all data, modify all data, those are your admin superpowers, uh, which again, then you don't need a sharing model. If everybody has view and modify all data, then we're good. Well, no, you're not, you have security problems. So that's where the sharing model comes into play. And a user's profile will determine creds for permissions the record owns. And then the term that Salesforce uses is the baseline. I'm using the term eligibility for read and edit permissions on records the user does not own. So we're gonna work our way through that to make sure we got it. So a profile normally will not grant you access to records you do not own. Again, view all, modify all, it does. But we're gonna take those two off the table. We're just gonna look at create, read, edit, delete and how we're gonna share records and what you can do with those records. So for OWDs, organization-wide defaults, can open or restrict access to records you do not own. And there are basically three settings. There's more, but basically three. Public read write. So with public read write, a user who has access to the object has permissions to read and write or edit records they do not own if their profile gives them edit. So you still have to look at profile. If somebody's profile is read only and the OWD is set to public read write, well, they can only read the records that they can see that they do not own because their profile doesn't give them edit. They can't even edit their own records. For public read only uh, is another option, a little bit more restrictive or private. Again, there are others, there's public read write transfer, you can transfer cases, transfer leads. Uh, we're not going to talk about that today, and it's controlled by parent. So two key points. Number one, OWDs cannot extend cred permissions not granted in a user's profile. And at the object level, the most restrictive read and edit settings between a profile and the object OWD is the winner. What we're going to see, we're going to work our way through that. And I highly recommend, if you haven't seen it, the Salesforce Who Sees Watch series. I put the link in our study notes for resources. There's nine separate videos. They're all really good. I'm sure most of you have seen them. So I'll do the first one. I'm going to call on myself. And then for the future scenarios, we have a total of five. Uh, I'm going to turn to Terry, and it, we're going to uh, do this as a group. Now, the thing I want you to orient for all five of these scenario questions What's in red is what's gonna change. So there's two things we have to look at. In this case, scenario one, the user's profile grants full cred to permissions on the opportunity object, okay? And the OWD for opportunities in this scenario is set to public read write. So what you see in red is what we're gonna be changing. These are the variables that we're gonna be changing in the subsequent scenarios. And the questions for these scenarios are always the same. The answers are gonna be different, but the questions are always the same. So question number one, which opportunity records does the user see? Question number two, what can they do with those records that they own? And question number three, what can they do with permissions on records that they do not own? So I'll do the first one, and then we're gonna open it up for the group with the scenarios two through five. So which opportunity records does the user see? All opportunity records because the OWD is set to public read write. What are the permissions for the opportunity records that the user owns? Full cred, create, read, edit, delete, because that's based on the profile. Question number three, what are the permissions for opportunity records that the user does not own? And the answer is read and edit, because they have the cred and the OWD is set to public read write. Okay, so we'll see. In the following scenario, so Terry, be ready. You're going to call on people. But here's the scenario. A user's profile is still going to be full cred in this scenario. But this time, we're changing the OWD to public read only. So notice there's a little bit of a mismatch here, right, between records user owns and records they don't own. So how are we going to determine access? So Terry, who's going to be uh, the uh, answer for question number one, which opportunity records does the user see? Uh, let's go with Patrick on that one. Patrick, you're up. I would see all of them. All opportunity records, regardless of ownership. So gold star, great job. Question number two, Terry, who's up? Uh, let's go Greg. Greg, what you got? What are the permissions for opportunity records the user <laughs> owns? Well, that would be the profile would set that for me. So it would be the all permissions. 
So create, read, edit, delete. Perfect. And question number three, Terry, who's up? Jason, you want to take it? So Jason, what are the permissions for the opportunity records the user does not own? They could just read it. They cannot edit or delete. Perfect. So even though they have full cred for records they own, they can only read records they do not own. So we're rocking and rolling. Scenario number three, a user's profile does not grant access to the opportunity project and the OWD is set to public read write. Question number one, Terry, who's up? Uh, Boone, and then we'll go with Tanner and Marciana. Okay, Boone, what you got? Which opportunity records does the user see? None of them. You got it. Can't <laughs> see anything. Don't even have access to the object. Perfect. We are rocking and rolling. So the next two people who do recall are still on the up. Yeah, we'll get we'll you on the next round. <laughs> you're, just gonna, you're still up. So question number four, or scenario number four, the user's profile grants read permission on the opportunity object, and the OWD is set to public read write. So Terry, who's up again? I think it was uh, Tanner, Marciana, and then let's go with Rebecca. Okay, Marci. So Tanner? Tanner. Tanner. Uh, they see all opportunity records. All opportunity records because it's public read write. Question number two, what are the permissions for opportunity records the user owns? They should be able to read it. That's correct. And then the final question, permissions for opportunity records the user does not own. Um, they should be able to read and edit. Read only because their profile is read only. So even though the OWD is set to public read write, so other people with other profiles, if their profile permits edit, will be able to read write in this scenario because the user's profile grants read permission, uh, the OWD cannot extend or grant a permission that's not part of the profile. Does that make sense? Cool, cool, excellent. All right. Number five. Scenario number five, a user's profile grants full cred and the OWD is set to private. So Terry, who's up for question number one? Which let's see, you I, um, let's go with Jude. Um, Jude what Andrew, you got? And who am I missing? Okay. Jude. So Jude, what do you have? Which opportunity records does the user see? Only the ones they own. Correct, because the OWD is set to private. You can't see anybody else's records. Terry, who's up for question number two? Andrew. Andrew, what did you got? Permissions for the opportunity records the user owns. So they have create, read, edit, and delete. You got it. And then finally, for is it uh, Kumar? Am I saying your name right? Yes, you are. Uh, OK, good. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm horrible with that, so I'll probably no, get it wrong no, no. next time I say it. <laughs> You're totally fine, and it, it does not matter to me. It matters to me a lot, so don't worry about it. So yeah, uh, they cannot see anyone else's record. Exactly right. So I think we've got a really good base of knowledge, which we'll be building on as we move forward. Public read write. You got to look at the profile. Do they even have access to the object? If yes, do they have? read and edit permissions. If so, they can read and edit other people's records. If not, if they can only read, well, then they can't edit other people's records because they can't even edit their own records. We want to tie it down a little bit. We don't want people editing other people's records. We go to public read only, and otherwise we can set it to private, and then we have to use other means to share records. Perfect. So for the sharing model, sometimes we get involved in configuration too, right? There might be a custom object that we're building. So Two decisions to determine configuration of record access within each shop object. Number one, should everyone who has access to the objects, remember by profile, we can keep people from even seeing the object. So should everyone who has access to the object be able to read and edit other people's records? The answer is yes, public read, write. The answer is no, we have another question. Should everyone who has access to the object be able to read other people's records? The answer is yes, read only. If not, we set to private. And then there are other means to share. Questions on the sharing model? 
So changing the OWD from default public rewrite, which is the default setting to something else will trigger record sharing opportunities. Okay, next, this controlled by parent. In this uh, screenshot, I've got three objects in a dev org that are quote, controlled by parent. The interviewer is controlled by parent, the job posting is controlled by parent and review is controlled by parent. So two questions, what causes an object to be controlled by parent? Can anyone answer that question? We'll just throw that open to the group. What causes an object to be controlled? It is a, a child of a master detail relationship. That's it, Jason. It's the child in a master detail relationship. So again, open question to the group. What are the implications of an object being controlled by parent? What is that going to mean to us as we configure an org? It'll inherit the security settings from the parent. So if it, whatever that's set at, it automatically goes to the child. You got it, Matt. So if I want to share records within the child record or the detail record in a master detail relationship, I've got to share the master object. So that's how you're going to do. If I, if I do something at the child object or the detail object, it's not going to, you can do it, but it's not doing anything. You've got to have access to that master uh, object. And so that's going to be something to take into consideration because you cannot have independent sharing between the two. So here's, you know, here we can see that master detail relationship between position and interviewer and a couple of bullet points um, about that. Now, lookup relationships are different. Lookup relationships, you can have that independent access between the parent and child object. And then something, if you, when you look at the slide deck on your own time, if you look in the notes on this slide, you'll see a scenario which we're really not ready to talk about yet because it involves other things that we haven't covered. But you know what? It, what would you do if you only had two tools? We have a lot more. But if you only had two tools, profiles and OWDs, and that's all you had, and you're trying to give a hiring manager in this case, and that's not a profile. Hiring managers can be throughout your company, right? But you're trying to give a hiring manager edit permissions on the interviewer object for the for records that are going to be shared with them because they're going to be doing interviews and they're going to need to edit the records right so how would you do that well the profile for the position object not the interviewer the position object would have to give them read and edit and the owd would have to be set to public read write you might not want to give that much access throughout the organization so that's why we have other rules so if you take a look at that uh, in the notes section, uh, something to think about as we move into the future weeks with more tools at our disposal, because there are better ways to do it. Finally, we're going to talk about role hierarchy and record sharing, rolling up the hierarchy, but not laterally, right? So that's something we'll be covering in future sessions of how do we share records laterally. But in the ro uh, role hierarchy, uh, we build the org chart and then that access is going to move up the chain. And we're going to use an example here in just a second. The key points, access rolls up the configured hierarchy, which can be different from the actual org chart. Um, the role hierarchy is based upon the role that a user has. And a user can only have one role. So a user can have one profile and a user can have one role. So again, configuration is really important as you're constructing the org. And roles and profiles are two different things. So here is a sample role hierarchy from a dev org. And um, again, it's rarely an exact duplicate of the company organization chart. You may have a, uh, an executive assistant to the CEO who's very high up on the chart for reports and dashboards um, when that's not really the way authority goes throughout the organization. And then can the administrator disable role hierarchy? In this case, we'll say for the opportunity object. Can you turn it off? And I'll, I'll throw that question out to the group. Can an administrator disable role hierarchy for the opportunity object? I believe you can. I could be wrong, but yes, I think you can. I'm, I'm going to interject. I'm going to say you cannot for standard objects. You can only do that. You can only disable role hierarchy for custom objects. Jason, you got it. 
you cannot disable role hierarchy for standard objects. An opportunity, as we know, is a standard object. But as you can see on the bottom of the screen with custom objects, you see those blue checkbox that you can click on or off, you do have the ability to disable role hierarchy. So again, configuration, what are you trying to do? How do you want to share uh, records? Now, OWD, so as we circle back around, are also going to affect role hierarchies. So here's an example um, where you have accounts, public read, write, leads, public read, write, transfer, but we've locked down opportunities a little bit to public read only, and cases are set to private. So notice here your choices as the admin for a role. And I've put the answers down here so you can read it a little bit easier. With opportunities, since it's public read only, we can't make something more restrictive, but we can't open it up. You've got two choices, view uh, all opportunities associated with accounts they own, regardless of who owns the opportunities, or you can even give edit permissions as you set up the role hierarchy as you select a role. And then for case, because it's set to private, here you have three choices. So cannot access, you wanna leave it the way it is. View, you're gonna open access a little bit. Or edit, you're gonna open it up a lot. So you have the ability with certain objects, opportunity and case, uh, to be a little bit more specific about uh, opportunities or cases that are associated with accounts that the users own or do not own. But otherwise, it's gonna just roll up the hierarchy. Questions on role hierarchy. So to wrap this up, how do the layers work? And this is a screenshot from the Who Sees What series, which again, I really liked. It really helped me when I was, when I first fell off the banana boat and was learning about Salesforce. And so there's two and only two ways to set object level cred permissions. You're either using profiles or permission sets. That's it. Everything else when we're talking about sharing is about access to records that the user doesn't own and how you want to open that up and how much. But the baseline uh, permissions are set by the profile. So you have records that you own and you have records that you do not own. And that's where the OWD, role hierarchies and more will come into play. So again, a profile cannot give you access to records you do not own unless you have that view all or modify all permission on the object or the view all data, modify all data throughout the org, those superpowers. So otherwise, a profile will determine, my word, eligibility for permissions on shared records. Remember that sharing rules cannot grant permissions not in a user's profile. So in this case here, if the profile is create and read, even though there is a choice here, view and edit for access by a role hierarchy, you're not able to give edit permissions to a user whose profile does not have edit permissions. So this is where you hear the phrase profile is king. But that would throw me off again when I was first learning because there's a distinction between records you own and records you don't. Just because you have edit doesn't mean you can edit uh, records you do not own, that's gonna depend on other settings, right? So users can, this is a rule of thumb that kind of helped me. Users cannot have more permissions on records they do not own than on records that they do own. That was something that kind of helped me as I was learning. And then two final thoughts, OWDs and role hierarchies can extend access to records a user does not own but cannot grant permissions beyond the user profile settings. And the most restrictive between CRED and OWD will be the winner for records the user does not own. And that's it. So I'll pause here for questions, comments, feedbacks. So Terry, back to you in the group. Excellent. Any questions on any of that? Fantastic, John. I have an indirect question. I mean, it was mentioned on the first slide. It really wasn't part of the content. But the difference in licensing, what is the platform license? I know the other ones I can kind of figure out. but Sure, the platform. platform yeah, platform gives you access to accounts, contacts, um, I want to say cases, and then any custom objects. I'm not positive if, if cases is in that. Anybody know that? I didn't think cases were included. I, you, because you say it's a service, 
I, because it's a service cloud object. Okay. All right. But you don't could, think it is? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, I was. I'm Greg, to... that's something we'd have to look up, but it does give you accounts, it does give you contacts, and it does give you custom objects. So it's cheaper, right? Yeah. So it's a great way if you have somebody who's just dealing with custom objects in your org, why would you want to give them a full Salesforce license for, let's say, opportunities? I know you don't get opportunities with the platform license. They're not in your sales department. They're working with the custom objects, right? So that's where the platform license come in. But as you're setting up your profiles, that profile for that platform license is going to be a lot more restricted than what it can cannot do. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. So I'm going to go. Cases are not included. They are not. Good. Good. Thanks for clarifying that, Carla. Yep. That's awesome. That's why co-leaders are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, great question, though. Uh, I do want to go back to the spreadsheet real quick. We I, and I do want to at every meeting do my best to honor our hour only, and uh, hopefully you you see that on the screens. Uh, Algie, Andrew, and Boone, I will email you um, so that you have this list. You also can get to it, you know, obviously yourself by going into the um, the Google Sheet. But um, one thing that I would encourage you to do is, as you are preparing for your, your presentations, we have another tab here on the, on the spreadsheet that has resource links that we've, we've kind of got it started. Boone has the link here as well. I'm sorry, George has the link for that video series that he was referring to. Uh, I, I recommend things like that. I also highly recommend that you source your your presentations off of the Salesforce um, uh, help um, articles as much as you can. Um, the reason for that is that the exams are going to go off of off of those Salesforce help articles. That doesn't mean there's not other great resources, and it doesn't mean you can't use them. Just just understand that your best resource is always on these exams is going to be something that Salesforce has written. Um, and so, so add your add those links as you go through as you're preparing, just so that um, it, you know as you're getting ready to take the exam. Once we're getting closer to the end, if you've got uh, an area that you're not quite sure of, you've got a whole set of links here that that just make it easy to go back and reference. Um, so please please do that. I think that's a good technique. Um, on your presentations, we've got an hour, and we're trying to fit three of these in within an hour. So ideally, your presentation will fall right about that 18-minute mark. If you've got an easy one that only takes 10 minutes to go through, congratulations, you can, you can do it in 10 minutes. But um, most of them try to, try to be about that 18 minute. That gives us a little bit of time for a quick introduction at the beginning of our meeting and, a, and then a closing to make sure everybody's got their assignments and they're clear on what's next. Any questions on that as we wrap up here for today? Okay, I will um, email those assignments out to the three of you up for next week. And uh, then if you have questions, feel free to reach out to Carla or I, and we will um, do our best to assist you on preparing for your, your presentation. Awesome, guys. Looking forward to this. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you so much, and we will see you the same time next week.